Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to Atlanta Live. I'm your host, Pastor Yavis T. McKenzie. Guess what? It's a new year, 2018. I know you're missing my sidekick, Pastor Wanderlyn B. Stokes. Amen. She's away doing the conferences, and we're blessing the Lord at this time. But still, we're going to have a good time. Please make sure that you support. Go to our ministries at Disciples of Christ Christian Ministries, DOCCM.org, or either you go to Deeper Life in Christ. That way you can go to Deeper, DiscoverDeeperLife.org, be able to find out the great things that we're doing in the body of Christ. Guess what? Tonight, we're going to have a blessed time. We have individuals who are going to bless us, be able to share in ministry. And I always tell you, get a pencil, a pen, something to write on, because as we go forth in ministry tonight, you'll be able to get the information, write it down, because these great speakers and singers tonight, you'll want them to be able to come to your ministry, bless your church, bless your conference, and say, how can I get more information? God is doing great things things in the earth. And tonight on Atlanta Live, guess what? We have people here that's here to bless you. Also, if you where you are and you're saying, I need somebody to pray with me, I need someone to stand and agree with me, guess what? We have prayer warriors in the prayer room. I went in there, y'all. There's an anointing in the prayer room tonight. If you have prayer requests and you're saying, I need a touch from God, I need somebody to touch and agree with me on what I'm dealing with, what I'm going through, I cannot go through it by myself. Our prayer warriors warriors in the prayer room. They're touching and believing God. And guess what? There's a great anointing that's on the inside of that room. So I'm telling you tonight, whatever you have need of, you don't have to go through it by yourself. God has some warriors, some people that are there ready to pray for you. And I believe tonight's program is just that deliverance for those who need it. I encourage you tonight, don't go anywhere for the next moments. You're going to be blessed by God. You're going to hear from God the best way God can deliver it tonight night for you. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes. Thank you for allowing us in your television. Don't forget Facebook, internet, different things, avenues. Go to the website WATC.TV and you'll be able to find out the many ways that you're able to hear this good gospel music. Not only that, but what God has to share through the preach word and the spoken word here. Now we're going to and down and you don't really know God. Now let's be blessed. Say Jehovah, Lord of everything, you can call him your redeemer, he can be your solid rock, but until you've hit rock bottom, brother, you don't really know God, until you've been in the fiery furnace and the fourth can brought you out, until you've been in a cold dark den and he shook those lions mouths, he's more than story of salvation saving cross until you've hit rock bottom brother you don't really know god he will be your savior he will be your friend he will still be faithful to life's very end but when you've hit the bottom and those battles you have fought and somehow come out shouting, Brother, I really know God. Until you've been in the fiery furnace and the fort can brought you out. Until you've been in the cold dark den and he shut those lines mouths. He's more than just the story of salvation saving cross. Until you've hit rock bottom, Brother, you don't really know God. Just 
the story of salvation's saving cross. Until you've hit rock bottom, brother, you don't really know God. When you've hit rock bottom, brother, you really know God. You really know God. Extraordinary faith for ordinary days. That's what I'm asking of you. Just give me your will and your strength to make it through. I will look to you in all that I do. Trusting you are faithful and true. And with extraordinary faith, that's what I'm asking of you. Sometimes the answers evade me. Sometimes the way isn't clear. But I know if I'll only listen, <laughs> you'll give me ears to hear. Defying all odds, I'll believe in you, God. Your promise to be ever near. So when Give me your will and your strength to make it through. I will look to you in all that I do. Trusting you are faithful and true. With extraordinary faith, that's what I'm asking of you. With extraordinary faith, that's what I'm asking of you. down a extraordinary faith. You know, in this day and time, we need extraordinary faith. We got to go beyond the faith that we already have and believe it. And guess what? I believe that each one of us, according to the scripture, has been dealt that extra a measure of faith. Tonight, I'm excited about our guest to be able to share tonight. She's named Keisha Wright, but she goes by, also known as Bikari Alta. Bless the Lord for you being with us Thank on this you. evening. In, in and sharing with you and speaking with you, talking about what God has done, there's a climate where mental illness is being discovered so much. And we, we've 
put it under the rug or we've looked at people with mental illness as if they were ostracized or someone different. But there are challenges that we all face when it's mental illness. We have so many things that we march for, but there's a climate where mental illness is coming forth, being talked about widespread. And you've gone through that area of not only you're ministering about it now, but you suffered with it yourself and now have the testimony. Can you tell us your journey in being able to deal with mental illness? Because people will look at you and go, <laughs> she ain't got no problems, no cares in the world, but they don't know the testimony of right. where you've come from. Right. I was diagnosed at the age of 23, and basically I, I dealt with it as far as not knowing the stigma that was on it at first. Okay. And I had like a pastor to talk to me about it. And when we talked about it, we talked about how God can deliver you from it. Okay. And that's what the main thing was I wanted to be delivered from it. Amen. <laughs> right. I didn't want to have the problems of being a mental ill person or okay. someone that was diagnosed with this illness. Because, like you said, the stigma is out there mm -hmm. and people are actually dying behind it. Okay, wow. Because people don't understand what's going on with them. Okay. Um, there's been times where, like, it was an example of the police officer that shot the veteran that was um, gotten... I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. the story. Uh -huh. But anyway, he basically didn't know that he had a mental illness. Right. And God, you know, didn't give us the mental illness to be a burden on us. Okay. It's supposed to be something to help you and to help people. How, do, how does one recognize or do you recognize if you have a mental illness? Because, you know, sometimes we'll sit there and jokingly right. we'll say, Call oh, okay, she she's getting a bipolar. check. You know, bipolar. Right. <laughs> right. You cray cray. We use those terms not knowing Loosely. that it could hurt an individual that some people are actually dealing with. What emotions did you go through in order to recognize what that looks like or how that feels? Well, basically, it's a diagnosis called mania. Okay. And mania is an extreme high. Okay. And it's an emotion that you don't... You spend an excessive amount of money, you um, become promiscuous, you okay. do things out of the character, you talk really fast, you, okay. um, you really don't understand where you're coming from at the time. Okay. And it's a place where... I've been several times in my life. Wow. And I've had to really overcome it through prayer yes. and execution of prayer. Okay. Because <laughs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens yes, me. <laughs> yes, yes. And basically, that's the main thing that I had to keep discussing to myself over and over again because the mania would come in, and even with a trigger with being over spiritual, can be a part of mania. Oh, okay. And people don't realize that people that um, when you're at a mental hospital, they can be praying and singing and going over into a tangent of, about God, mm -hmm. and it's all part of mania that they're wow. in at the time. And then medicine goes in you, and it can bring it out even worse. Wow. So in the process of you dealing with that and being able to say, okay, this is where I am, look at the aspect of going to seek, because a lot of people... A lot of people will sit there and go, I'm all right. Right. And don't seek medical help. Don't right. seek anybody. Ah, I'm not going to see nobody. Because they think that that also is a bad stigma, going and asking, seeking professional help. They'll go to the preacher. Right. And thinking that's all. But I've even said this. Some things are beyond the pastor's help to where exactly. you need professional help. And we as people don't want to accept the fact that it's okay for us to get the additional help. How are you accessing the help to where you can get that diagnosis? Well, I, I wasn't really accepting of it at first. Okay. So I didn't want to take the medications. Wow. I didn't okay. want to see a therapist. I didn't want to um, see a psychiatrist because I didn't want to. I mean, I was fresh out of college. I went to Clark Atlanta University. I was, you know, thinking I was living my prime life, okay. you know, in a relationship that was abusive at the time. Okay. So it was a lot of things put on me at one time. Mm -hmm. But as far as seeking the professional help, you got to have your team of a psychiatrist and a therapist because they, they work together as one 
to help you to overcome things. And I, I was told that even in the middle, just like so many other things, having a support system. Right. Having a support system is one of the things that can help you overcome drug, alcohol, different addictions because of that, not only the mental health, but being able to, because there are a lot of people. There are a lot of people okay, that will not suffer through it and just go ahead and throw them into a room, throw them into a facility, a facility. and don't want to deal with them. Right. How is it that you have your support system? My mom and dad are awesome. Great. They've been there awesome. I mean, my parents have seen me through trials and tribulations and where they didn't know what to do to help me. And they've been there beyond that, you know. I have family at home that prays for me. I have yes. a spiritual mentor yes. that prays for me and she watches over me as far as when I'm feeling down because before I actually came on the show, I was going through a down period in my in my life. Wow. And um, the mania I talked about mm -hmm. is the high period of the okay. bipolar. Okay. But the depression is the low period of the bipolar. That's why it's bipolar because you go through extreme highs right. and lows. So right. I... Um, I was experiencing this and I cried yesterday at my therapist and my psychiatrist's wow. office, just broke, broke down Wow! because I was like, I'm not feeling myself. Okay. And it's the medicine that, you know, we take, I take the medicine to help me. Okay. But I also know that the medicine also can hinder me as far as my creativity, as far as my thinking, but all of that is unbalanced with the chemical imbalance that you have. Okay. So it's like somewhat of a side effect just being able to have, you want to be on the high, but it also brings you to that to midpoint mid of the low. the low, exactly. Oh, okay. Now, in the process of you being able to go through this, God allowed you to write a book. Yes. And in the, I, as I began to read the book, I said, I don't know nothing about chess. <laughs> I play checkers. But in the process, I've learned in reading the book how to play chess in that there are several parts to moving it and being able to do. In the book, um, I love chess notes. Yes. I love the chess notes of you being able to share that. First of all, how did you come up with the name B. Carrie Alter? Because your name is Keisha Wright. So what made you say, oh, okay, this is who I am, B. Carrie Alter? Because I want to brand myself. Okay. And I didn't want to, like, when I get married, I wanted to be able to still be Keisha Wright uh -huh. on paper as, as far as having a, a name behind Keisha Wright right. and not having to be like a Kim Kardashian and okay. having to worry about if your name is going to be still used as a brand. Uh, so for Carrie gotcha. Alta is my alter ego, I guess okay. you could gotcha. say. Uh -huh. But it also stands for tall glass in Italian. Y'all, guess what? She ain't short. I'm 6'2". She two. is not short. <laughs> How tall? 6'2". Six 6'2". Two. Six two. She is not short at all. Okay. And so in you doing it, I love it. In chest notes, I said, oh, okay, what does that have to do with being able to bless? And I got over into the book, Being Able to Read. There are a couple of things that are in here. Uh, there's a chapter called Distractions. <laughs> And distractions is one of my favorite. I have another one, but distractions, I find that there's so many of us that while we're playing chess, checkers, or any game, there's so many distractions that can easily throw us off. Talk about just that chapter. And then my favorite chapter is being able to say this one. Uh, when will the siege end? <laughs> when will it end? Because I'm bombarded right. by so much that's going on. Here it is. You're trying to jump this. You're trying to take this. You're trying to do this. When will it end? What is, is this book saying that we should know about? Well, it's basically saying, well, CHESS is an okay. acronym, first of all. Okay. It stands for Christ Has Enlightening Success Strategies. Oh, okay. And Christ has given me that through when I was sick one time. Okay. I was, you know, in the facility and we were playing checkers okay. and chess okay. and spades. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking my language now. Go ahead. <laughs> so life is a game. Okay, gotcha. And we have to play, like you said, with distractions. What can distract you from your game, from being on your A game? Ah. Like I want to be a model. I want to be an actress. I okay. want to be a very successful person in life. Uh huh. And what has distracted me is the bipolar. Okay. But it's been people that have brought the bipolar out of me. Wow. <laughs> All right. Sense. That's good talk right there. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that's why people say, you know, she's acting bipolar. Well, it's the people sometimes <laughs> that are bringing the bipolar out of you. Okay. But the medicine is what you need to balance you out. Oh, okay.
And so in having that distractions and then being able to go through, maneuver the fact that this person is taking this, this person is taking that, I'm looking at it just because a person jumps this or takes the king or queen or whatever right. in the process doesn't mean that they have to take you. How does this siege end? How does all of this game end with not only bipolar, but just being able to deal with mental illness and even ourselves being challenged? Oh, wow. Yes. That's amazing. I don't know how it will end. Okay. But I know that it can start by being able to recognize. Okay. And not have it as a stigma against you to be, oh, she's crazy, oh, okay. she needs to be in a mental facility, or okay. she needs to be locked up, or whatever. Okay. It needs to be something that's recognized in the black community, especially because it's young people that don't understand what's going on with it as well. Okay. And when you have like ADHD and ADD and all these labels that you put, a exactly. label is a label. Mental yes. illness is a mental illness. Okay. And when you have all these things put on you, it's pressure on the person. Yes. And that like, that pressure is something that you just have to sit back and say, well, God, where, where is this taking me to right. next? Right. And the next step is to just give it all to him. Amen. Give it all to God. In, in looking at the book and realizing the book, there are people that say right now, I, I'm challenged. I'm challenged in the fact that my parents have diagnosed me, the doctors diagnosed me, the stigma, people keep saying I'm bipolar, people keep saying this to me. First of all, I need to seek help. And there are people that say, I need to talk to this young lady <laughs> so that I could feel good because there are a lot of stigma and there's a lot of negativity. Right. And so that brings on anxiety. It brings on depression. How can people get in touch with you to say, I need to have this young lady to come and talk to my group? Come, because it's not just young people. There are older people. There are a lot of people. It's right. not uh, based on your socioeconomic <laughs> status. It's based on the fact of the individual. How can they get in touch with you so that you can come not only share your book, but just being able to share your testimony of how it to be delivered? You can go to becarryalta.com. And I have all my information on my website. Oh, okay. And you and spell that for them? Cause you, oh, yeah. Sorry. B-I-C-C-H-I-E-R-E-A-L-T-A dot com. Be carry Alta. And also, if you can't find it there, I'm sure Keisha Wright, they yes, can look Yes, you can it. Google Keisha Wright and... Um, It'll come up as well. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> it's just being able to share the ministry because it's a blessing because so many of us are challenged. And that's the way I look at it. It's not, like you said, it, it has that stigma, but we're all having our different challenges. Right. Thank you for sharing your testimony because Thanks. you are a blessing to so many of us. Amen. So I want you to go. Be able to share and look at the website and be able to hear from this young lady to know what God is doing. He's doing great things again. I love it. Chess notes. I learned how to play chess. Amen. Listening to someone else's testimony, knowing that I don't have to stay where I am. And just because you're taking this and you're taking that, you're not taking my life. You're not taking my salvation. You're not taking who I am as an individual because God has given me life. And not only that, but he has giving it to me more abundantly. Guess what? Nobody can take that away from you. We're going to listen to Ann Downing again. How precious are your thoughts and be still. <laughs> You had changed my life In the morning when I wake You're always there I find such strength in knowing That you are thinking of me Your Father's heart Will hear and answer prayer Precious are your thoughts to me, oh Lord. How fast is the sum of them, wondrous every one of them. How precious are your thoughts to me, oh Lord. Are your thoughts 
close to me, oh Lord. We've all been in that place when we wondered, does anybody care? It just seems the world outside just goes its merry way. But I remember how in that secret place you formed me in your hands. Number the grains of sand. <laughs> Standing in the midst of your confusion. Wondering if God's left you all alone. You're waiting for the wind to blow. You're waiting for the rocks to break. You want to see the fire. You want the earth to shake. So that you will know which way to go. step on the path that you must try. Be still and listen for his words. Every prayer you've prayed, he has heard. But sometimes we must wait to know his will. Desperately, you're longing for your answer. At times, it's hard to find the words to pray. You're feeling so discouraged now. You're feeling like you've lost your way. You want to hear his voice, but he's in the quiet whisper. You can hear by faith, just watch and wait. Be still and know that He is God. And He is with you every step on the path that you must try. Be still and listen for His word. that every prayer you pray he has heard sometimes we must wait to know his will
Be still and know that he is God. Are you listening to God? Now, you're about to make a couple of decisions and you don't know what to do. You're being pulled over here. You're being pulled over there. I'm encouraging you now, my brother and my sister, be still and know that he is God. It's not in our government. It's not in our president. It's not in anything that we're doing. It's not in our pastors or our leaders. Be still and know that he is God. He's the same God. If he blessed you before, he will bless you again. He will deliver and we're encouraging you right now if you're dealing with something and you need someone to help pray you through dial that number 770-300-9828 because god has people here for you if you say i'm tossed i'm pulled on either side and don't know what to do believe me we're here to pray for you and to let you know that god has a word for you be still and know that he is god don't forget hit us up on facebook and on the website you can look up doccm.org or you can also look up discoverdeeperlife.org for Pastor Wonderland Stokes. We would love to be able to come share with you at your church, share with you in your conference because we're just those kind of people what we love beyond the television. We love beyond what we're doing and we encourage you now. Don't forget to dial the number 770-300-9828. We have prayer warriors that want to pray for you and we are so excited about God. I challenge you now. Wait Take a step back where you are now. Before you make another move, before you decide, just stop where you are just for 30 seconds. Just be able to say, I'm breathing. I'm inhaling God. Now, I'm not going to make a move. I'm not going to make a decision. I'm going to look at this thing from a different perspective. It's the beginning of the year, and so much is going on. Take time. Don't rush into anything. Don't rush into anything. Don't rush into anything. Life is going to go by, and guess what? You have to make sure that you're being led by God's Spirit, not by our emotions, not by our feelings, not by our friends, not by our leaders. We're being led by the Spirit of God. We're going to go to the phones. Praise the Lord and welcome to the prayer room here at TV 57. My name is Sister Angela Irvin from the Mount Calvary Baptist Church and we encourage you to call. Prayer partners are here, they're waiting and for you to call and encourage you tonight, just call us here at 770-300-9828. And as you call us, we do just want to make sure that you do know who Jesus is. And as Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now if you believe the word of God, all you have to do is pray this simple prayer. Say, Father, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me. I believe Christ died for me, and God has raised Jesus from the dead. I want to turn from my sins, Jesus. Come into my heart and be my personal Lord and Savior. I promise to obey you and follow you all the days of my life. So if you have prayed that prayer and you believe the word of God, that's all it takes. Heaven is rejoicing. Just give us a call here and let us know that you have accepted Jesus as your Savior at 770-300-9828. We're here to just encourage you and to pray for you and let you know that Jesus is the answer to whatever you're going through. And our God is always there for you. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. Again, call us here at 770-300-9828. We're here waiting for your call, and we're so grateful for you, and now we'll go back to the set. Thank you so much. One.
-hmm. Don't forget to dial that number, 770-300-9828. We're here to pray with you. We're here to pray for you knowing that God has blessed the multitudes to be able to look after you. We are, our guest has been blessing us all <laughs> evening and down, and we bless the Lord for you and being able to share your singing ministry with us, knowing that you've had such a vast background. Uh -huh. You've traveled. Where is it that you say, I know that the music is different today. I know that the music <laughs> is different today. You're just starting to write, but in the music where you are, how do you stay grounded in saying, this is who I am, Ann Downing, and I'm not shifting? Well, you kind of do your own thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do have to seek God over that. Amen. For Because I've been singing, this is my, I think, I don't know, 55 years or something like that. Wow. And... Um, yeah, a lot of changes have taken place. Yes. And I can remember in earlier days when I was singing with my husband in the group called the Downings. Yes. We were very careful to stay right on, on that edge. Okay. We wanted to stay right up. And then all of a sudden you turn around, we came off the road for a while, and then uh -huh. we decided to go back and do some things. Well, things had changed completely. Wow. So don't get too hung up on what what you don't like or like right now. Just wait. Down the road it'll change. <laughs> and you you said it right. Yes. Stick with who you are. Yes. Because it is not that, you know, sometimes it's not that one's right and one's wrong. Right. It's just the difference. Now, I have my favorites. I, okay. I am, uh, I do have a strong conviction about songs and ministry. When we minister to each other about him, yes. I don't think we just yes. minister to, to him. Yeah. Okay. I think his heart is, I think he feels worshiped when, when you and I mm -hmm. talk about, or we sing a song about him. Yes. We look at our brothers and sisters and sing songs okay. uh, together about God. Yes. That's worship also. Yes. So yes. I don't want us to forget. It's okay to sing songs about our experiences with God to each other. Fanny Crosby taught us a lot about that. Yes. Blessed assurance, Jesus yes. is mine. mine. Yes. Well, I mean, don't we want to sing that? Or we say, <laughs> yes. blessed assurance, Jesus, you're mine. We want to do both. Yes. And uh, But whatever fits you, I like singing with brothers and sisters yes. about the goodness and faithfulness of God. And that's where you, you actually be able to feel the presence of God, being able to know that I'm not just singing to him, that it's a fellowship. Why do we say that there's going to be a heavenly choir? Then they're just <laughs> all singing to him. They're all fellowshipping in song yes. to be able to share. And that's worship. It is worship. It is. And it I don't want worship. us to miss that. And I think okay. we're slipping a little from that because it's like, oh, no, I agree. we don't like songs anymore that talk about our experiences or whatever. We want to sing only songs that bring, well, uh, I don't know. I think they're both good. <laughs> I, I think the experiences that we have, again, as I said before, and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb Amen. and the words of their testimony. Out of our experiences, yeah. songs are birthed. All of the songs that we have yeah. now were birthed out of experience. They're right. not all just written down because mm -hmm. it's biblically correct. Well, to be honest with you, one of the reasons I wrote uh, Be Still mm -hmm. um, was that I was just noticing we were all talking about how busy we are. And I'm thinking, really? <laughs> uh, and then I found out that the busy people are the ones that usually will say yes when you need them to do something else. Oh. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, I'll stay busy. But I want to hear what he has to say. Yes. And I, don't, I think, you know, he really chided those sisters, Mary and Martha. Yes. Uh, be careful while you're, mm -hmm. you know, busying around. Don't forget to sit at his feet. You know, we need both. And I, I don't want to be someone who is just really... I can stay focused on things forever yes. and forget, wait a minute, I wonder what he wants to say to me today. And we have to stay commune to God. One of my favorite songs of all times is Larnell Harris's I Miss My Time With oh, You. Oh. Because it thanks, challenged... Thanks for reminding me of that song. Yes, I love that song. It challenges us that while we're going busy... He misses his time with us. How can you yeah. communicate if you don't? I remember preaching a sermon a couple of um, years ago at Green Passage with Dr. Colette Gumby, and I talked about how you have to stay charged. Yeah. If we let our cell phones go <laughs> and they're not plugged into the charge, they die down. How I thought are you going to say, if we let our cell phones go, praise God. <laughs> 
No, but if you're not still connected, at some point, yeah. it drains you. How are you going to make a call if you're not connected? And so many of us are singing God's songs, preaching God's words, and we're not connected. So just like what right. you're saying, we have to stay connected yeah, to God so that we can hear his voice. You bless me with be still. I'm going through a situation to where I heard you tonight. Um, I heard what God said well, through you in the midst of that. Mm -hmm. I just posted those that are watching now know I posted something on my Facebook just before I came on the show and said, you know what? I'm not going to be discouraged. I refuse to give up. And see, in you ministering tonight, you're saying, oh, okay, you said that and automatically the devil started attacking me. Go, right. uh-uh, you need to go and fix this. You, you need to go do up. this. And then I heard what you said tonight. Through well, I heard God, God saying, no. Just be and those still. songs were chosen days ago to sing tonight. Be so still God knew and you know needed it. that I am God. But that's what you're talking about. We have to sing songs that minister not only yeah. to him, but minister to each, each other. other yeah. Because at that point in time, somebody will hear something that says, okay, this is where, I, and I talked about it before, this is where I am. And this is what I needed to hear. Not to say that the other songs wasn't, but it yeah. ministered to me in the place where I am now. And I can accept it Absolutely. for what it's worth. Absolutely. How is it that you're traveling? I know you're here with us tonight, but you've gone through so many. You've been <laughs> so many places as we Google you, we YouTube you, <laughs> and find out. But what is God saying to you now as you're traveling? What is he well, saying that he's speaking to Anne Sometimes Dye? I think it's him. I blame it on him anyway. <laughs> I, sometimes I think he says, Anne, would you just kind of stay home more? Uh, wow. I mean, really, wow. let's face it. There are people wow. in my neighborhood. I love my neighbors. Okay. There are people in my neighborhood probably need to hear some of this. Wow. You know, and I'm gone all the time, wow. which is what I'm thankful for. I mean, Amen. I grew up on a cotton farm in Mississippi. Yeah. In fact, my sister is here in the studio tonight, wow. and uh, she she was the one who encouraged me to Amen. sing. And, and then I left the cotton farm, and I promised God, get me off this farm. I'll never quit singing. <laughs> so I love to get in the vehicle or the plane and leave town to go minister. Okay. But I think that I hear God saying to me, okay. it's okay to minister to your hairdresser too. Wow. And don't, don't, or the people on Wednesday night, I only get to go to my church on Wednesday wow. nights. You just, you know, I don't have to be out there. I love being out there. Wow. And of course, um, that's my income. Okay. That's not, I don't, I don't apologize for right. that. Uh -huh. And, um, but I do, I'm praying right now that God will help me to be able to not have to travel every week, but okay. maybe he did wants me to, I don't know. Uh, I have a healthy body, so maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. I do feel a, a burden and an interest okay. in those people close around my family okay. and my uh, close neighbors and people that I go to church with. I want to be sure I hear what they're saying and needing to. I hear what you're saying through the midst of that. Again, I hear ministry <laughs> and what God is saying. Sometimes we have to minister around us. We're too busy trying to that's go harder. outside of the category. We're trying, everybody's saying, let's go outside the borders. Let's reach out. Oh, well. Sometimes, again, those that are around us, we're missing them. Husbands are not listening to their wives. Wives are not listening to the children. No. Nobody's listening to each other. Everybody's in separate rooms. I hear what you're saying. See, I'm listening for the Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Well, you know what that song said. Yes. Sometimes we must wait to know his wait. will. Wait, amen. Oh, that's not a good word. Is right. It, it is a like wonderful word. word. We don't, well, so we don't like I'm that word. So I'm hearing that sometimes we have to minister to those. Take an opportunity. Yeah. I love uh, two people that I know that they tickled me, uh, Dr. Colette Gumby and uh, Pastor Nathan Simmons. They tickled me everywhere we used to go, and I even got some of it myself, ministering in the grocery store at the yeah. gas station. God bless you. How you doing? Yeah. And just found myself ministering. Yeah. I would go to a restaurant, and my members would go, they'll sit there and go, Pastor, are you going to pray with her right here? And finding out, and it's what I'm hearing from you is seize the opportunity. It's not a pulpit Preachers, you don't need always the pulpit. Minister where you are. That's what I just heard, what yes, you're exactly. saying. And it's not to say that, again, you don't appreciate the income. You don't know. You appreciate what God has launched you in. But there are some times where you have to pull back. Exactly. And appreciate where God is. And God can make that work. Oh, my God. The things that yes, we think are impossible. Yes. God specializes in watch things it, thought it. impossible. Yes, yes. He can do what no other yes. power can do. Can do. And that's the blessedness mm -hmm. of God it being is. able it to It really share. is. And when you get this age, uh, <laughs> my, me, you don't worry so much about what people might think. Okay. You just think, you know what, I think this feels right because... 
I've prayed long enough. I don't mean I've prayed too much, but I've uh-huh. prayed long enough to know that I can kind of sense if I have a peace, just a peace in my day. I don't even have to have a peace about a certain thing. Right. If I just seem to have a peaceful day, that's a good indication that things are doing pretty good. It's a good day. And it is, and, that, and I can trust that. That's God is like saying, yeah, there's a ten, there are 10 million things that need to be done, but enjoy your peace. That's it. Whoa. Get, and there's so many people right now need peace. There are so many in the state of unrest countrywide absolutely. and in churches, in the economy. We need peace. We need to have that settled peace. And I'm encouraged that again, I got to have, see, you bringing this song out. I got to have peace like a river. <laughs> <laughs> like a river. That's I've it. Got peace, peace like, like a river in, in my soul. soul. And that's the joy of being able and to we, have that. That does not come from anybody but him. That's you don't have to, you can trust that. I yes. know I have a, some friends who probably have a hard time trusting, like, am I getting lazy? Right. Probably not. Right. You're probably just learning that it's okay to just rest in his peace. Yes, and just being able to enjoy mm-hmm. it. And I know that there, I, see, I'm sitting next to you and I'm a worshiper and I love to sing praise. See, I, there, as they said, there's songs bubbling up in me. We're going to have to sit around and sing a little bit, just <laughs> oh, being able okay. to share because that prompts the anointing out of each other just to encourage mm-hmm. us. And I believe singing ministry absolutely has one of those yeah. developed it opens entities that it opens up the heart yeah. and it allows people to yeah. express what normally they wouldn't yeah. say anything or do anything, but it allows each other yeah. to be able to yeah. express. Again, you've traveled so much. How can we get in touch with oh. Ann Downer? Because they're saying, I just want to be able to hear her. Well, uh, yeah, because every Sunday Look, morning, before, Sunday- she, before she stops traveling, we <laughs> want her to be able to come to our church. We want her to be able to come to our ministry. How yeah. can they get in touch well, with Well, I have Ann a website, I okay. uh, have had for years, okay. anndowning.com, and that's Ann, A-N-N, Downing, not the E's name, anndowning.com. Amen. And I think they'll find the information there, too. They know how to contact me there. They know yes. about my music. They'll yes. find out everything I think they need to know. And being able to share. And Look, we're, we're going to miss There's a little form able- they can fill out to send in to get information about having me come to their area. Oh, okay. And see, I love it. She didn't end there. That means that we still have opportunity <laughs> before she shuts down. On well, I'm not gonna, don't let that, don't, I hope the rumor doesn't get started. No, no, no. It Look, ministry is not over. I just choose to say it's another phase. Yeah, yeah. It's another phase yeah. of where God, yeah. and it's the settling of who you are. You, and you said 55 years of ministry? Well, yeah, it was. Ooh. In 55 years, this yes. is, yeah. And so that's a long time to that be able to share. That was before most of the people were born. <laughs> to share <laughs> in the gospel. Look, I'm just 50 years old, so it's no, been singing a long enough time for that. You were not even born when I started Not at all. This. But it's a blessing that in my lifetime, Absolutely. I have had the chance and the opportunity to be able to share in ministry with Ann Downing. Oh, and again, brother. it's a blessing for you to be able to share. Thank you. Not only, again, be still is in my heart. It's in oh. a blessing to be able to do that. And so thank you for the songs that are in your spirit, that are in your heart, that you'll be in, let's just say this, in 60 seconds, what would you encourage all of those people that are watching now just to be able to say, this is in my heart and I just want to give this to you? Well, we've talked a little about it, about we're striving, striving, striving. It's like we've got to do more, we've got to do more. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's true. But it's also okay to say, God, I am really worn out right now. Can you help me? Oh, my God. Can you help me to relax and yes. just be at peace with being with you? Wow. And uh, just look around for opportunities. They're all around you. Amen. Uh, don't worry whether, oh, well, I can't, will I still be able to minister? You'll find them. People wow. will come to you yes. um, if they know they can. And I think maybe the prayer we need to pray is that, is, that, is God, help me to be still. And I don't want to miss a thing you have to say. Again, I'm so blessed. Thank you so much that in my lifetime, I've had the opportunity to enjoy the music ministry. (laughs) Enjoy the music ministry of Ann Downer. So you've been a blessing to me tonight and all those that are watching tonight. So we're blessed by that. Guess what? I know for a fact we ain't done yet that we're going to be further blessed by you. So can you sing at least two more songs and just be able to bless us tonight so at least I can walk out in victory knowing what God is going to do. So okay. at this time, I'm just going to release it onto you, and we're going to hear now from okay. Ann Downing. Okay, okay.
When the wolves come home Trouble seems so near You close your eyes to sleep at night sheep, my friend. They're just as weak as you. Jesus is the one who'll bring sweet peace and rest to you. Almost 50 years. It was an original Downing song. When I hear a baby cry, when I see the blue, blue sky, I feel a love so warm, a friend so kind. Watches over me, and I know he cares for me. I talk to him each day when I pray.
Cause with sin His father must have cried When his son was crucified It's because he loved us so This is why Because he loved me Enough to give his son to die It's not mine to wonder why But to believe I want to encourage you with that word tonight because he loves you. God loves you so much. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you're dealing with right now, I want to encourage you, my brother and my sister, that God loves you. Beyond any measure, beyond anything, guess what? He allowed his son to die on the cross for you. You're never without hope. You're never without joy. You are never without Jesus. He loves you with an everlasting love. Continue to watch Watch the program, 770-300-9828 is the number. We love you here at WATC Atlanta Live, and we thank God for who you are and what you've done. Just being able to share and allow us to share it to your homes, those of you that are watching via the Internet, those of you that are sitting in front of your televisions just sitting and watching and saying, thank God. We thank God for you and allowing us to come into your homes tonight. Continue to write us. Continue to let us know that you're being blessed blessed by this information and we thank God for you. Guess what? Stick and stay. Get your pen and pencil paper. We're not done yet, but we want you to be able to enjoy the break that we have and say, stay right here. God has more for you.
Welcome back to Atlanta Live. I'm your host, Pastor Yavis Steve McKenzie of Disciples of Christ Christian Ministry. It is a blessing always to be here at Atlanta Live. Guess what? I'm not here by myself. I'm challenged in the fact that God has so many people that are blessed for us to be able to be here. And I have Abigail that's going to bless <laughs> with us tonight. It's a blessing to have you here with us tonight. Thank Abigail you. Sloan, just to share your ministry. I know that you're new to being able to share singing ministry. What made you get started and say, this is what I want to do and what God has called me to? Well, it was something that the Lord allowed me to share from the age of even two years old. Wow. Yeah, I have video footage my dad took when I was two years old singing, Oh, the Blood of Jesus. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so it was something that the Lord has always allowed me to share with people. Okay. And it just kind of naturally progressed into, you know, worship team and singing in choirs. And then finally to this EP project, which has been an absolute blessing. Amen. So as you're getting ready to do this now, there's so many people, as you're saying, there's so many songs that you've gone over. What made you say, oh, okay, this is the song for this particular release project that I got to put on here. Because I know so many artists, they pick and choose, got a hundred songs. How do you narrow it down and say, this is what God is saying on this particular EP? Well, I think the theme of the entire project itself is, is hope. Okay. Hope at the at the end of a struggle, at the end of a storm. And, okay. and Reason and Rhyme is actually the title track itself. And that was kind of a rock bottom song for me where okay. I couldn't find any answers. I couldn't wow. find a way out. And the Lord was like, I'm coming. You just have to wait a little longer yes. for me. And I promise I'll be there. So I feel like these all these songs, the Lord allowed them to be written through me okay. um, for this project itself. Yeah. And some of us, like you're saying, the the word wait. Yes. It's so much in the Bible and yes. we so much disdain that word. Yep, I am the but least But in patient. being able to share that, how do you convey that through the songs of saying, this is what I'm going to birth? Because we, we as we learned, we share our testimonies. Mm -hmm. And so in that, what birthed the song to say, this is it? And this is the time for it. Definitely testimony, experience. Okay. Uh, I remember Reason and Rhyme, I was going through a really, really dark season of depression. And, and it was that moment where I was like, I'm about to give up and walk away from you if you don't wow. come through for me. And at the very last second, the Lord was like, here I am, here I come. You just had to wait a little longer. And now I'm going to lay out the entire plan for you. Wow. And yeah. that's another thing. So many of us want to give up. Yes. So many want to throw in the towel. As I was saying earlier, I put on my face. I refuse to give up their life circumstances yeah. that come at us, but we have to make that decision to say, I refuse to get up. How many songs are on the EP? There's five total. Okay. Yep. Three of them are my own babies, so oh, I'm pretty okay. proud of them. Amen. Yeah. So he allowed you to sit the pit. It's different to be able to sing somebody's songs that they wrote for you. Yes. But how is it that you're able to sit down and say, okay, this is what I'm going to put pen to paper and be able to share? Well, what's kind of funny is there's a lot of moments where I'll, I'll write, I'll sit down and I'll write and half an hour later a song's written and, and I don't even remember writing it wow. really. It's just all of a sudden here and I'm like, okay, that's when I know the Lord's wow. trying to get something across to me. <laughs> I'm like, okay. to share it. Yeah. And so that's kind of these three, you know, the three that I wrote that are on the project, those three were birthed out of those moments where it was just me and the Lord, a piano and a pencil and we just kind of. Wow. Oh, and you play as well. Yes, sir. Oh, isn't yes. that awesome? <laughs> so it's easy for those of you who can play because you hear it <laughs> and then you can play it and yes. put it to pencil. How exactly. we're going to hear from you shortly. How is it that after they hear you say you can get in touch with Abigail Sloan so that we can enjoy your music, not just yeah. here with us tonight, but just to be able to perpetually say, I want to hear from this young lady. Absolutely. My website is abigailsloanmusic.com and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, all sorts of fun things. You can get a hold of me all through there. And just being able to share that music, it is exciting to be able to have. And we applaud you here. We're praying for you here you. at Atlanta Live saying thank you for sharing your gift with us and not <laughs> keeping it to yourself to allow the God on the inside of yes. you to be able to share with us. So we're excited about it. And so we're going to be blessed by you. We're excited to the <laughs> fact that you're going to take time to share within that. And so I'm blessed to be able to share and say, here we are ministering now, <laughs> Abigail Sloan, and we thank God for you sharing your ministry with thank us you. tonight and being able to share with our audience. So be thank blessed, you. and we are praying for you and your project. Thank Abigail you so Sloan is going to come and minister to us now.
Gail Sloan. Oh my God, who am I apart from you? Did that bless you like it blessed me? And we, oh my God, that has touched my heart tonight. And we thank God for Abigail. Well, we have our guest tonight and it's a pleasure to be able to have Linda Lee. It's a joy and a blessing to be able to meet you on tonight. We are excited because we're gonna get into some stuff and it's exciting to be able to have, not only are, we, we'll talk about a whole bunch of stuff tonight, but in the fact that you are an author, you've written several books, not only that, but you've released a CD to be able to share encouragement, and further, a playwright, oh Lord, just to be able to teach us that some things are just visual, some things we can't read. It's, it's good to be absolutely. able to read some things. Sometimes we have to lift oh, it absolutely. off the pages right. and allow it to be brought forth. Tell us about what God is saying unto you, about just a couple of minutes about the books, because we have so much to cover, but just being able to say about the books and the play writing. What, what is God saying to you right now about a play that you're writing and that's in the midst of your fingers? Relationships. Relationships. Every, everything I do, Pastor, okay. is about relationships. Okay. And the newest production that I got coming out is called 50 Miles Per Hour. 50 miles per hour. It's oh just my something God. about when we get past 48, nearing 50, it's uh -huh. like our life says zoom. Okay. And it goes by so fast and we give up. Okay. But that was never God's plan for us to give up. Okay. For us to grasp the fact that we're getting to that age. Amen. And enjoy it. Amen. Yes. Look, you talking to me. I am 50. <laughs> just turned 50. So again, it's I'm finding that it is another different aspect of Absolutely. life. And you look at things differently. Not to say that I didn't, right. but my focus is different. And oh, sometimes yes. people who are under 50, under 45, do not understand. Oh, he acting funny now. Oh, he's shifting. Yes. But I've looked at the limit. That's right. I've looked at the speed limit. Ooh, and the speed I, limit is 50. It's 50. And you are shifting for a good reason. Yes. For a good reason. Yes. And so you talk about in that aspect of relationships. You yes. say not only platonic, but right. romantic. Oh, absolutely. Because now in the church, folks don't want to deal with the romantic. Oh, no. Everything has to be platonic. Yes. Sister yes. And, brother, and brother. But they don't understand about that relational yes. part. I, I heard a preacher say, well known preacher say, I can't play uh, Amazing Grace when I'm with my wife right. or with my husband. Right. They go and get something else. So how is it that we're able to deal with that in relationship, moving from platonic to relationship and making balance? Okay, so here's that. You mentioned okay. that. You mentioned the Amazing Grace, and, okay. and I, I guess they were saying they can't get romantic with Amazing uh -huh, Grace. With amazing Here's grace. the deal. Okay, with come on, talk to us. Without His Grace, yes. which is amazing. Uh -huh. Think about what he's saying. Uh -huh. Flip it the other way. Okay. It's Amazing Grace, the title. Yes. Uh -huh. His grace is amazing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your marriage wouldn't even be working in the first place. Amen. So you may not want to listen to the whole Amazing Grace song <laughs> while you're trying to do what you need uh -huh. to do. Amen. But you got to first focus on if it had not been for Amen. His Amazing Grace, we would not be an amazing couple That's with right. an amazing uh -oh. marriage uh -oh. if there was not an amazing God. Amen. 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 Then look, that's put a pin right there pin and that right period there. and that's, that's over it. in there. <laughs> being able to share in your books, Flatline Love, being able to talk about that, not only that, but being able to share in your BFF, really? Really? Uh -huh. what, what's that about? What's, your BFF, look, what's that all really? about? Uh -huh. It's like three question marks behind uh -huh. it because we say everybody is our BFF. Right. You're my BFF. All you have to do is friend me on Facebook and you're my BFF. <laughs> really? You right. don't even know me like that. Right. 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 Um, your BFF really is just that. I'm asking the question. Mm -hmm. And we leave God out of our platonic relationships. Wow. Did he say you were supposed to be friends with that person? Wow. How That's did you right. choose them? That's right. And how about this? Right. Just because it comes to an end is not a bad thing. Amen. Amen. It's not so hard to say goodbye to <laughs> yesterday when it just needs to happen. Yes. When it needs to happen. There are seasons, times and seasons. We yes. skip that in Ecclesiastes oh. where there are times and seasons. People are not meant to stay in our lives no. and we have to know do you, are you in my life for me to bless right. you or you to bless me? And right. when that time is up. Are you a giver? Are you a taker? Are you draining me? Are you adding asset? There may be some people that are there forever. Amen. But you still know, need to know how to balance that, and you still have to seek God with that. Let me tell you a story. I, you said you're 50. You just mm -hmm. turned 50. Yes. Well, I just, I'm 54. Amen. And so I hang out with the, with some millennials in a minute. Me too. In a heartbeat. Now I yes. love my people my age. My uh -huh. classmates and I, we still hang out. Mm -hmm. But I got some millennials 
specifically a little group that I call my slim group. Okay. <laughs> and I'm telling you, all of them could be my children. Wow. But when I tell you these are some powerful individuals that I just truly believe the season we're in, okay. Okay. as far as our relationship, okay. I just think God got that season transitioning still together, though. Amen. Still Amen. together, though. But see, we have to know that to be able to, I'm not here to father them, right. to mother them. Right. But again, we learn from each other. Absolutely. And sometimes we get to that 50 mark. I don't need to learn from anybody. But it's to exactly. appreciate. Exactly. I, I looked at the fact what they said, Betty White just turned 96. She hangs around. Everybody that's not her age. She is Well, so the rest jazzy. of them died. So. Yeah, 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 <laughs> but the fact <laughs> is, again, she hangs around a lot of people mm -hmm. that's younger mm -hmm. than her. And so she continues yes. to go forward. Yes. because she choose not just to set the limit yes. at saying 50 is a stop sign, but it's a lifestyle for me to be able to say, this is what I govern myself by. Exactly. 50 is not octagon and it's not red. <sighs> Ooh, say that one more it time. It is not octagon and it is not red. I have it a lot of friends who are 50 stop. and it's changing. Oh, I know. It's changing. It's and over you go, for them. Wow, it's they like stop. they're declining. We're declining. It's to say, okay, Okay, well, we're going to stop it. doing this. And, That's it. And I made the statement. I said, I declared that my last half won't be like my first half. Exa and it won't be. No, it won't. But you're in control of that, too. Yes. You're in control of actually not just listening to God now, okay. yes. but following him. Yes. And it's all good. And in being able to do that, God has lifted you to be able to side, put us on goals. Yes to be able to give us vision yes. to say, oh, okay, we need to set vision boards. We need to set vision goals. We need to have some things. Um, I have a friend, um, um, we went on the walking trail, walked four miles, John um, in Chicago. Uh, and he began to ask me, Yavis, what is your one year goal? What is your five yes. year goals? Yes. And he challenged me on that walk four miles and coming back to be able to say, I need to set some goals absolutely. in my life that are different from the ones I had before oh, absolutely. 50. absolutely. But now, I don't call them uh, what they call bucket lists. It's not right. a bucket list. Right. It are goals that are yes. attainable. Attainable. How do you get us to that point of vision board? You're coming down my street. You know okay. that, right? So I believe in vision boards. I believe okay. in vision. Helen Keller, okay. which was struck with an awful disease yes. right before two years old. Yes. She became deaf and yes. blind. Okay. Helen Keller said, you know what's worse than being blind? What? It's having sight with no vision. No vision. How did I start getting to that point? Because God would always show me things. Yes. But I wouldn't act on it. Wow. And uh -huh. when I started to act on it, I was all over the place. See, I'm sanguine. Okay. So I'm A-type. Okay. So I shoot from the hip on everything, <laughs> right? I'm like, okay, I'm over right. there, I'm over uh -huh. Then he was right. like, no, 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 baby girl, you need to get that thing stable. Okay. That's what my 40s and 50s did for me. Okay. It stabilized me. And, 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 and we have about three minutes. That's fine. How, how do we get to that point where we say, okay, I need to stabilize and create vision? Can I show you a little bit? Yes, show me. I, got, I can show you in 60 seconds. Hey, so this is a vision. This stable is a board. my life. Okay. Okay. So, and actually, I'm doing vision board parties. Okay. Okay. So what I would do is we would take magazines. Okay. Words, scriptures. Okay. You would get them. You would cut them out. Okay. You would glue them on your board. Okay. You would start at the top with the ones that you know right now I want to do. Okay. And you would work your way down into like a, a, a maybe a five-year, two-year Okay. Six months for me. I do mine within that year. Okay. I don't have time anymore to be talking about my <laughs> right. years and all of that kind of right, stuff. Right, right. And so I start here. And mine, because I'm relational. Okay. It always has something to do either with my marriage. Okay. Which I'm happy to say will be 32 years 32 in May. 32 years in and May. And then my children and my grandkids and then my platonic relationships. Okay. People I want to network with, maybe okay. like you and whomever. Okay. I put them on my board. Okay. I put them on my board. Right here, vacationing. Losing that weight, okay. becoming healthy, and I glue that, and I leave space, leave some white space because okay. you never know when you want to add something else. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. how you get and, to And that. we're getting those vision boards and being able to do that yes. for our lives and saying, this is who I am yes. and what I'm going to. Yes. Again, without a vision. Without a vision. The people perish. They perish. They and disappear. So in sharing that and doing that, there are a lot of people excited. They're listening and saying, I'm listening to them now. How do we get in touch with you? Because I'm sparked to go okay even more. 50, as they say, I got more days behind me than in front of me. How do I set that and say, I need uh, you to be able to come? Linda Lee, I need you to be able to put 
put me on a path to doing that vision board. How can we get in touch with you? You can get in touch with me, first of all, call me directly. Okay. Lead Legacy. That okay. is the name of my company, Lead okay. Legacy. You can call me at 678-499-1802. Okay. 678-499-1802. Okay. Or go to my, le my, my website. Okay. Lead Legacy. Lee it's Legacy. about a legacy. Not okay. just leaving one, but living it. <laughs> okay. Lee. L E E Legacy L E G C Y dot okay. com L E E L E G C Y dot uh -huh. okay. com and that's how we get into because you get you're in sparking me. me to say, okay, yes. I'm putting my path. I need yes. to get the path and get it ready to be able to do. Thank you so much you're for so being welcome. able to share that because it's a blessing in Thank doing that. You. Yes, I'm excited. Now, look, I'm being pushed to go forth. Abigail Sloan is taking us out now with enough. <laughs> We bless you. Oh, my God. Abigail, you have been a blessing to us tonight. We thank God for your ministry, and we thank God for you sharing with us tonight. Look, it has been a blessed night. Have you enjoyed ministry tonight? Make sure you let us know here at WATC.TV. Make sure you write in, Facebook us. Uh, what else you can? You, um, go ahead and do it on Twitter. You can do everything. Just be able to let us know that you've enjoyed the program tonight and so that we're being blessed. We have an exciting time in God. We know God. You are blessed. We are blessed for having you. God bless you.